international media has descended upon Johannesburg, on Joburg today, we talk to international media about covering what is one of the biggest stories of our time. Nelson Mandela was a, a, an instantly recognisable figure in Australia. He was a figure who was greatly admired in Australia, and he was a figure that uh, is held in very, very high esteem indeed. When Mandela passed away, my story, uh, they give space in first page, it sells 1.2 million a daily. It is among the first uh, 50 uh, newspaper in the world. It's a huge story because um, the Germans, they really admire um, Nelson Mandela because what he did was exceptional. There's a, a very big connection between New York City and Nelson Mandela. Not only that first time, but the UN is in New York City. And of course, Mandela was always there trying to get his message out across the world. My name is Kamahelo. You're watching Joe Beck today. Joining me now in studio is the BBC's Africa Bureau Chief, Peter Burden. Peter, thank you so much uh, for being here with us. Give us a sense of the BBC's coverage for the story. Well, it's, it's absolutely massive. I mean, when uh, President Zuma announced the, the death on Thursday night, mm -hmm. at that point, all our TV and radio channels started rolling. Our online page went live, so uh, all the uh, online readers could make their comments and we could open that up to the whole world. And uh, we've basically been on air ever since. I mean, our, our, our world TV channel was on air for about 50 hours nonstop, wall-to-wall -wall mm -hmm. Madiba coverage. And uh, it, it was really moving and it was a great honor and privilege for us to be part of that because obviously the old man has been ill for quite a long time. So uh, uh, there was time to prepare, there was time to gather material and tributes and, 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 and friends and people talking about him. So to actually share that with the world audience was, was absolutely fantastic. Uh, we all went, I think I clocked up 43 hours from that moment without sleep. Uh, I managed to go home for a few hours and I, I confess I fell asleep at the traffic lights for about 30 seconds. <laughs> uh, but now it's a very, I mean, so it's, it's now reinforcements are coming from London we have teams from Nairobi, teams from Lagos, uh, teams from Washington have come over as well. So the whole world is converging on Johannesburg at this time. And I, I, I think the, the whole South Africans everywhere, we're feeling this, that Johannesburg, uh, Nelson Mandela yeah. and the family are at the heart of world attention mm. at this moment. Uh, let's talk about your, your audience. They typically resonate with Nelson Mandela. Very much so. Mm. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I was pleasantly surprised because I think there were some people thinking, well, he's been ill for so so long yes. that, 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 that it, it isn't it isn't going to come have a massive impact on people it has I mean our online pages have had record number of hits mm -hmm. uh, our, our audiences are in excess of 250 million people that stretches across English Somali Swahili Hausa Great Lakes uh, 25 other languages around the world so massive audiences and I've I've never as the bureau chief it's always, you know, you don't want to be part of a big event which no one's interested in. So mm -hmm. for me, it is such a privilege yeah. that, that the whole world is turning to, to all our BBC outlets and, and, it, and it's making such an impact. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter, you've had your, your, your own experience covering Mandela as a reporter. Tell us a little mm -hmm. bit more about that. Yeah, I was here in the 90s and, 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 and the years of transition and, and, and all the negotiations and actually mm -hmm. really to see Nelson Mandela in action as a political leader yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's strange because, you know, almost, and I know this, this made him a little bit frustrated, almost he's been turned into a saint. You know, we've seen Mandela angry. We've seen Mandela when the AWB came into the World Trade Center, they smashed through the doors. And Nelson Mandela says, I'm going to bring on Contogusizvi down here and we're going to sort this out. You know? yeah. So we have seen the flesh and blood of the man. And I think that's the way he would like to be seen and would like to be remembered. But such a great figure. I mean, the man who had the ability, as we've heard many times in the tributes, to talk to cabbages and kings, you know, that made everybody feel important from the most humble cleaner in the room to the, 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 the ladies serving the tea to the political figures and the big leaders he would meet. So, and, and, and I think it's quite nice. I hear a lot on local media yeah. of people saying, well, how can we change our lives to live a little bit more like Madiba wanted us to live? And I think there is no greater tribute to a person than that, that his legacy 
what he leaves behind is as strong as what he achieved when he, when he lived. Yeah. And I, I think there's no greater tribute to him than that. Peter, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Thank you. I'm Zama, and you're watching Chobe Today. Next, I talk to two born frees about how Mandela's struggle paved the way for their futures. Joining me now in studio is Toby Stienkamp. Toby is a born free, born in 1994. Toby, thank you so much for, for, for being here today. It's a pleasure. You were born at a time when South Africa was now in a new era, post-apartheid. So you, you don't typically have an experience of apartheid South Africa. But tell me what it was like for you growing up. Well, for me growing up, I didn't face any encounters with apartheid. I heard a lot of stories from my grandparents and how they encountered it. My parents barely encountered it. They were also young at that time. But as I experienced it, it was a very horrible time in our, mm. in our nation. And, and growing up, obviously, in a, in, a in a democratic South Africa, did you have black friends? Where I'm studying now, I don't have any white students studying with me. So most of my black friends are at my college. And I come along with them so well. They are the best people in the world. They're not different from any other race. I, I have no preference over any race. Have you ever encountered racism growing up? Or? Well, as my grandfather being, uh, uh, he was in the apartheid, so he was, he's still very in the apartheid, but he's, he's getting over it now because we're trying to tell him that, that that's not the new South Africa. You can't be like that anymore and you have to, to know your people around you. And, and so with Nelson Mandela's passing, what did Nelson Mandela mean to you? Well, Nelson Mandela was an icon, not just a national icon, but a global icon. And mm -hmm. I think he gave South Africa such a big hope in restoring what, what we, our beautiful country really has in mm -hmm. store for all the people. And he has such a, a, a beautiful um, way of life. He, mm -hmm. You won't even expect him knowing you, but he, he will come and speak to you. Mm -hmm. Like all the, these people in the parliament, they didn't even know he knew them, but he spoke to them as if they were his friends. Mm. So tell me, as a young South African, um, being appreciative of Nelson Mandela's legacy, what part are you going to play um, to ensure that everything he fought for stays as it is? Well, first of all, I want to ensure that people of South Africa don't have any thoughts about each other, about how apartheid used to, to uh, prolong in their life. Apartheid was before I was even born, so I don't think any apartheid should be a part of my life or anybody else's life in today's life. Yeah. Thanks, Toby. It's a pleasure. Okay. Thank you for having me. Born in 1994, Anile is also a born free. Nele, thank you so much for, for being here today. You were typically born in a time where you know, South Africa was in a new era, a democratic mm -hmm. era. So you don't have any experience of what it was like in apartheid. But tell me what it was like for you growing up in South Africa. Well, growing up in South Africa, I'd say I had a normal childhood compared to the challenges my parents faced about racism and not having free education. I'd say um, it's completely different. Mm -hmm. I grew up like a normal child, not knowing what race was. And yeah. And tell me, did you have white friends growing up? Yes, I did have white friends. My first grade one friend was white, and I didn't see that she's white. But only as you start learning about racism and history and stuff, then you say, okay, it was different back then. Black kids didn't have white friends. Mm -hmm. so. Tell me, do you, have you ever experienced racism or, or witnessed it? Maybe not firsthand, but maybe you've witnessed this in society. Do you think it's something that's completely done away with, or is it still lingering around in society? I think it's still lingering within society. I think I have experienced racism, but the slight racism, not as in a classroom full of black kids and then white policemen come in because we're black and they, yeah. But just being treated differently because of the color of your skin. Mm. Yeah. And let's talk about Nelson Mandela. Obviously he's passed now, he's an icon mm. all over the world. What, does, what did he mean to you personally as young Anele? Well, We've been hearing on TV that Nelson Mandela is the father of the nation, and that's exactly what he is. A father is a leader, head of the home, and that's what he's done for our country. He's been leading us. He's been um, leading us into one democratic um, path, and that's what we've been... Sorry. 
Okay, yeah. and my last question, Anneli, as a young person who typically enjoyed the fruits of everything that Mandela fought for, everything that he was in prison for, everything that he struggled for, how are you as a young person going to keep his legacy alive? I would say, um, no, just following in his footsteps because he felt that oppression and he didn't turn on white people and say, yeah, now it's our chance because we've gained this freedom, we're going to do what you did to us. And he embraced white people and now the country is a family, we are a rainbow nation and I think I'll take that from him. Nele, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. My name is Leo and this is Joburg Today. That's it for Joburg today, but all does not end here. We can still keep the connection alive on social media. Follow us on Twitter at Joburg Today. Give us likes and comments on Facebook, joburgtoday.tv. You can also follow me on Twitter, that's at Christine J Today. We play out today's show with a tribute, Father of Our Freedom, by Cara and our very own Sean Parrott. Till tomorrow, it's bye for now. Mm -hmm.